So good morning everyone, this is Sandra, he's the Mass Spec Engineer and he is going to be describing for us today how the scroll pump works. Well there you go, and he's going to do that with fogged up glasses and everything. Excellent. So, uh, yes, this program of course is available in the scribe video for the visibly impaired. Now, uh, scroll pumps, yes, let's take one step back. Uh, all pumps and compressors work on the same principle. You have a vessel of varying volume and you have two valves on so that it sucks air in on one of the downstroke and pushes it out on the upstroke. So in the early days this was done with leather bellows and that's how J.J. Thompson did it in 1912 when he made his first master pump. Meanwhile, um, so it always helps if you know a little bit about the history. So this is what they call a rotary oil pump. And if I turn this thing, you see how the volume changes in that chamber. So some models would have a spring in there to hold these, to push these out. Others work by centrifugal force. So where does it push it out to? to? There, there's a little valve. This thing can flap up and down. So there's your valve. Now, because it has oil in it, this thing's pretty leak tight. Uh, you need the oil because uh, you want to cool the metal. You want to make sure the metal doesn't seize up and so forth and so forth. So these have been around forever and ever. Um, and somebody said, well, we don't really like the oil, because you can get oil vapor in your machine. So, we're going to come up with a dry pump that doesn't have oil, and that is the scroll pump. So here we have a scroll from uh, a totally beyond help scroll pump. Scroll pumps take about two, three years to go from brand new to beyond repair. So the way that this thing works, this is one half of the scroll, that's the other half. So this gets put together like that, but then you don't spin it around, no, 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 it just does a little macarena like that. There's these little bearings in there, so see how little um, stroke there is in these things. So this is just doing that. Now as it's doing that, whoop, the... Um, it changes the volume of the chamber that's basically created by trapping these things together. Now, where's our valve? Well, it used to sit there, but it's no longer there. So again, same principle, varying volume, push it out through the valve. The valve is a one-way thing, so you can suck it back in. Now, this thing relies on there being a perfect seal between the two halves of the scroll and it's pretty obvious that that is no longer the case. So what they put in there to achieve that is what they call a tip seal. There's some bits of it. This one has the Teflon on it and this is, that's a variant Pump. This is an Edwards. This has some tip seals. Ah. And they have no Teflon. This is kind of like a carbon theme. Now, the other difference between a scroll pump and a regular oil pump is that the scroll pump needs new tip seals regularly. So that's a constant money draining thing. These things can run for 35 years without needing any. However, um, yeah, so scroll pump. Because there is no oil in here, this thing leaks. Because you can never get a perfect vacuum seal between two surfaces that are moving. So the consequence of that is 
that the vacuum you get out of one of these is definitely not as good as the vacuum you can get out of one of these. To put some numbers on it, mm -hmm. uh, one of these will go to about 5 millicore, which is 5 one millionth of an atmosphere. Those things, you get, you're lucky if you get a couple of four out of it. So that's three orders of magnitude difference right there. Um, when is that important? Well, early turbo pumps, for example, uh, were only as good as the four vacuum that you gave them. Now, to accommodate these things, people have been making turbo pumps with what they call a drag stage in them, so you can run those with absolutely crappy four vacuum. Um, yeah, well, what else can we say about it? So if both of these pumps will back up your turbo pump, yes. they will be the initial pump that you turn on to get you down uh, to about uh, 10 to the minus 3 um, millibar? Yeah, well... 10 to the minus 2? Yeah, like this one will do about 5 times 10 minus 3, this will never get to 10 minus 3 so at okay. all. This is like... Not even new? No. It's, uh, and the other thing of course is the... Uh, copious amount of black dust that they make, which is when these seals wear out. Now, if you get it to the point that the tip seals, they call these things, that these tip seals are totally worn out and gone, uh, the metal starts to grind against the metal, and that's typically when you throw them away. How much will a new scroll pump cost? Uh, 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 thousands of dollars, okay. no doubt. More expensive than a uh, uh, a mechanical rotary yeah, pump? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't priced these things for a while because we never buy any. Uh, this, you know, this the old stuff. In this lab, if a scroll pump dies, it gets thrown out and it gets replaced with an oil pump. So, so some of these new instruments that have scroll pumps on them, for instance, uh, we the. Have one. So here's the uh, scroll pump for the Synapse. Now that's a, that's a large one. Uh, that still only gets some skin from the Okay. Okay, well thank you very much Sandra. And uh, tune in next time for the uh, next uh, pump information. <laughs> Cheers.